Welcome everyone to Pivotal Stats, where we talk about data analysis techniques, business intelligence platforms, and much, much more. So let's go. Hey everyone. So this is going to be the last video within the date time DAXs that we're going to cover. Apart from the DAX that we've already covered, there are many other DAX within date time function and feel free to check them out by going to the link in the description, which will take you to the Microsoft website uh, where you can, you know, view all those DAXs. And we will not be covering those remaining DAXs uh, within this video or any future video because I believe that those DAXs are pretty straightforward and you can follow them just by having a look at it. Since that's out of the way, let's jump into today's topic. And the first DAX that we're going to cover today is something which is simple enough, but this is something that, you know, we often use to make our formulas or make our DAXs dynamic. There are two DAXs that we use in this. First one is called now. Okay. So let me just create a new column so that you can see what's happening. Instead of a measure, I'm going to create a column. And first one is now. What this DAX does is it does not take any parameter whatsoever. You can just enter now and close the brackets. And when you press enter, it will give you the current date and time, which is there in your system. Okay. Now, how does that help when you create a measure or when you want a column or a formula to be dynamic enough so that it gets updated according to the each day of the calendar, then you might want to use now. And something similar is the second DAX that we're going to cover is today. Okay. So what today does is it, instead of giving you a date time, it gives you a date, the current date. Okay. So again, today, and it also this does not take any parameters. You just open the brackets and close the brackets and you press enter. And now it is giving the current date. Uh, you are saying date time because this column is formatted as date time. So if I just format it back to date, you will just see the date. So it's showing you the current date as per your system. Coming to the third DAX. So you might have seen a DAX that I used in the last video, which was year and then a month DAX. Okay. Where, you know, we provided that with a date and it extracted the year out of it. And then it extracted the month out of it. Similar to that DAX. There is another DAX, uh, which I thought we should cover because we already covered year and month. The DAX is called day. All you have to do is just write day and provide it with a date. So we're going to use this pizza sales date column. And what it does is it extracts the day from the date. Okay. So the first, second and third, like this, right? It extracted the day out of the entire date. Now the fourth DAX that we're going to cover today is called E date. So what this does is it returns a date, which is a number of months before or after the start date. Okay. So I'll show you with an example. So I'm going to use the same pizza sales date column and in the months parameter, I'm going to write two. So what it will give us is it will use the same date here and it will add two months to it in E date. When you give a positive number, it means to add that many months. However, if you give a negative number, let's say minus one, it minus the number of months from the current date. Okay. So in this case, when I said minus one, it gave us December, first of December. So it did not change any day or year. It just simply minus one month from the current date and then gave us the final output. DAX number five, EO month. Now what this does is it's pretty interesting. It gives you the last date of the provided date. So let's say you want uh, from this date. So pizza date, you want the last day of whatever date that we have in this column. Okay. So we know that last day should come as 31st January, right? So I'm going to write zero because I don't want to add any month to it. You know, I just want to calculate the last day of the current month that is there in that column. So I'm going to press enter and it is giving me 31st January. If I gave it a number, let's say one, what it will do is it will add one month to the existing date and then calculate the last day. Okay. So if you see now it's giving me 28th Feb. Similar to E date, we can also add negative numbers to it. So minus two, let's say, and this will give me 30th November. 
Now in EO month, there's an interesting pro tip. Instead of the last day of the month, you want the first day of the month, right? So in that case, what you will do is, let's say I want first day of whatever date I have, I want first day of the next month. What I can do is zero, which will take it to 31st January and then say plus one, which will give me first of Feb. Sixth DAX, network days. So what network days does is, this is an recently added DAX into Power BI and what this does is, it gives us the number of working days within your supply dates, okay? And you have an option to remove week weekends as well from this, as well as holidays, okay? So the starting date for me is 25th of November, 2022. Okay, I'm gonna enter it within a double quote. So I'm making this a static date. The end date is the date that I have here, pizza date column. Now in the weekend parameter, I'm gonna write one. So what one means is it's considering Saturday and Sunday as a weekend, okay? But there are other options as well. I'll paste a screenshot on the screen somewhere. You can pause the video and check out the other options that are available if in case you want a different weekend. So let's say your company or your organization have a different weekend structure. Let's say you have holidays on Friday and Saturday instead of Saturday and Sunday. So you can use that as well. For now, I'm going to use one only, okay, because I want to consider Saturday, Sunday as the weekend. And in the last parameter, which is holidays, what you can do is you can supply it with a list of holidays that you have in your organization. So what you need to do is you can create a new table, a separate table, which has a couple of dates in it. Okay. And you can consider those dates as your holidays. And this formula would automatically ignore those dates while calculating working days. So for the final parameter uh, for holiday, I've imported a table, which is called holidays. And I just have a simple column in that table with a couple of dates which will represent the number of holidays that i have in a particular year okay so for now i'm going to use that table itself so holidays okay and close it's calculating number of working days using the starting date that i provided and the end date okay you see a negative number here is because uh, the end date that i supplied here uh, for these three row items is smaller than the start date that I provided, which was uh, 25th of November 2022, right? So that's why you're seeing a negative, negative number. But otherwise, uh, what it did was it ignored Saturday and Sunday because I said one and uh, calculated the working days considering the list of holidays that I have in this table, okay? So we have a couple of holidays in this table. So it considered that and calculated the final network days. Last DAX for today is weekday. And what weekday does is it returns a number which represents a day in a week. Okay. So let me give you an example, pizza sales date. And there are three options to it. One, two, and three. One means your week starts from Sunday and ends on a Saturday. So Sunday being one and Monday being two and so on and so forth. If you choose two here, that would mean your week starts on a Monday and ends on a Sunday, Monday being one. And three means your week starts on a Monday and ends on a Sunday, but the Monday will be counted as zero. So it, the numbering would start from zero and then zero for Monday, one for Tuesday and so on and so forth. So I'm going to choose one where my week starts from Sunday. So it has given me a number which represents each day of a week. So I know that 2nd January was a Monday. So that's why it's showing me two. So that is it for today. With this, we mark the end for the date time function. And as I said in the beginning of the video, there are other date time functions as well, which you can look into, which are pretty straightforward. You can just read through it and you will understand how to implement them. So you can check out the links in the description for that and uh, see all the functions that are available for date time function. Next, we will be covering aggregate functions and things are going to get more interesting where once we cover all these functions, we're going to try to clump them together, create a mashup function and cover other concepts like variables as well. Right. So stay tuned for that. And if you're liking my content, then please do subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.